All signs were there, but he did not see it. I'm talking about Joseph Stalin, totalitarian dictator of the Soviet Union. Warnings reached him that the Germans would attack in 1941, yet he refused to believe it. But why? Why was Stalin so blind? Why did Stalin not see it? That's what we're going to discuss today. On the 23rd of August 1939, a plane landed in Moscow and Nazi Foreign Minister Joachim von Ribbentrop stepped out. He was brought to the Kremlin and he met Stalin himself. There they discussed about a non-aggression pact and also trade agreements and a secret protocol to partition Eastern Europe. The Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact was signed. Ideology made little difference to Stalin. He could as easily make a part with the imperialist West as he could with fascist Germany. In the Soviet view, all of the reactionary states of Europe would be ground to dust in the end under the iron wheels of socialism. Stalin believed he had made a great deal. On photographs like these, you see him with a great joy on his face. The Germans promised him peace and the possibility to restore the borders of the old Tsarist Empire. The fact that there would now be a direct German-Soviet border instead of buffer states in between, that was something Stalin took for granted. The last thing Stalin said to Ribbentrop when they met in August 1939 was that on his word of honor, the Soviet Union would not betray its partner. Stalin took the pledge seriously. Later, Stalin would have told future Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev, I know what Hitler is up to, he thinks that he outsmarted me, but actually it is I who have outsmarted him. As the Germans advanced into Poland in September 1939, the same month the Red Army seized control of eastern Poland. Later, the Baltic countries, Bessarabia and North Bukovina, and parts of Finland were taken. And then the Nazis attacked Western Europe. They invaded the Netherlands, Belgium, France, and Luxembourg. Stalin was delighted because now there was a new war in Europe that was not at his border. No, it was in the West, far away from his country. Thing was, Stalin was less delighted when it turned out that the Germans had swiftly overtaken these countries. Stalin had hoped that there would be another stalemate, another trench warfare like in the First World War that would drag on for many years, but this was not the case. Although Britain remained at war with Germany, they posed no real threat any longer. Two major changes in Soviet defense politics were made. First of all, a new line of fortifications was created along the German-Soviet frontier. This meant that the old line was disbanded. Furthermore, the idea was that if the Nazis would attack, the Soviets would put up a stubborn defense and then bring the war on German territory. The second major change was that the Soviet tank corps was disbanded and its tanks were divided over the several infantry units. These changes would have deadly consequences when the Germans invaded. Historian David Glantz states that Stalin was the example of a leader who refused to see what was coming despite the evidence. He refused to believe in the German capability to attack because he believed that Hitler had no such intentions. And this was wishful thinking. Now, he hoped to delay a possible confrontation, for example, by not manning the border post with too many soldiers, so the Germans wouldn't feel threatened. Also, border troops were forbidden to fire at border violators, as well as German reconnaissance planes, again, out of fear of provoking the Germans. And by providing to Germans the resource materials they needed, 
agreed upon in the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact, Stalin hoped he could delay a possible armed clash between his country and Germany. Stalin hoped he could reform his army before an armed confrontation would take place. But why? Why did Stalin refuse to believe the German intentions to attack? There are several reasons for this. Stalin was suspicious of Great Britain as well as the Polish underground and was afraid that these would try to drag him into an armed clash with Germany. And he believed that Hitler was a rational man that would not try to invade his country while already being at war in the West with Great Britain. He believed that Hitler would try to avoid a two-front war at all costs. And then there were also institutional reasons. Because of the purge, Soviet intelligence operations were decimated. Only the military intelligence service, the GRU, remained essentially intact. And the GRU chief, Lieutenant General F.I. Golikov, had apparently succumbed to the German deception efforts. Golikov duly reported indications of German operations, but he labeled all such reports as doubtful while emphasizing indications of continued German restraint. Other intelligence officials were so afraid of provoking Stalin or Hitler that their reports were slanted against the likelihood of war. German deception operation proved successful. While there was a German troop buildup in the east, Germans said that they were training for Operation Sea Line, the possible invasion of Great Britain. But they want to do this away from the British bombers and reconnaissance planes. And the Nazis also published fake news stories about an imminent British invasion. Hitler stated that the troop buildup in the east was nothing more than a precaution. And this encouraged the Soviets to lay low and try as much as possible not to provoke the Germans. In May 1941, the Germans deliberately spread it rumors about a change in their policy towards the trade with the Soviet Union. And the Soviets now thought that if there would be a clash between them and the Germans, there would be an ultimatum or something of a kind first. The German conquest of Yugoslavia and Greece, which was concluded around the time, helped to cover up the planned Operation Barbarossa because it explained the German troop buildup in the east. It also postponed the date of the attack on the Soviet Union. Therefore, Soviet intelligence agents who correctly reported about the original date of the attack, May 15th, were proven wrong when that day passed without any incidents. Many other warnings had proven false also and therefore the intelligence agents lost their credibility. On the evening on the 21st of June 1941, Stalin eventually sent out a warning to the troops stationed at the borders. But because of the obsolete Soviet communication systems, many of these warnings were not received by the Soviet commanders. Some Soviet commanders did took precautions for a German invasion, but these were very exceptional. In retrospect, the most serious Soviet failure was neither strategic surprise nor tactical surprise, but institutional surprise. In June 1941, the Red Army and Air Force were in transition, changing their organization, leadership, equipment, training, troop dispositions, and defensive plans. Had Hitler attacked four years earlier or even one year earlier, the Soviet armed forces would have been more than a match for the Wehrmacht. Whether by coincidence or instinct, however, the German dictator invaded at a time when his own armed forces were still close to their peak while his arch enemy was most vulnerable. It was this institutional surprise that was most responsible for the catastrophic Soviet defeats of 1941. If you want to know more about the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and why it was signed and all the details, it's an interesting video. Go check it out right here. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you later.